Greetings science students. Let's start with a broad explanation of what breathing actually is. So it's the process of moving air in and out of the lungs so that a gas exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen can occur between the respiratory system and the circulatory system. So why do we need to breathe? Well, the trillions of cells in your body that makes up your tissue, which makes up organs, which makes up the various bodily systems, need oxygen in order to function effectively. But we also need to breathe in order to expel the carbon dioxide, which is like a waste product that is produced by our cells as part of the cellular respiration process. So let's look at some of your breathing apparatus. So we have the intercostal muscles, which you can find between the ribs and they enable the ribs to contract and relax with the breathing rate. And then just underneath the lungs, we have the diaphragm, a massive mu uh, muscle, which again enables the chest to move up and down and that will impact the air pressure within the lungs. But what's really calling the shots in terms of the breathing process is the survival part of your brain, part of your brain stem, known as the medulla. Apart from regulating breathing, the medulla also deals with a bunch of other pretty important functions like heart rate, blood pressure, and also a bunch of different defensive responses, e.g. when we ingest some dodgy food, it's the medulla that will cause you to vomit, likewise sneezing and a blink if we get a puff of dust in the eye. And so the medulla is working in a bi-directional manner. It's relying on feedback from various organs and bodily systems um, and so therefore some afferent signals will go to the medulla, such as the carbon dioxide levels in the blood, and then an adjustment will be made. So it'll send an afferent signal back to those muscles so that we can adjust the, re the breathing rate so that we can restore equilibrium, depending on what type of activity we're doing in terms of the gas levels in the blood and the brain. So when we talk about the mechanisms of breathing in and breathing out, there's four key things to key in on. Number one, we get a contraction of those key muscles that are involved in the breathing process, namely the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Now, as a result of that, the chest will move up and out, and that causes the lungs to increase in volume. Now, as a result of that, because there's an increase in volume and there's still the same amount of gas trapped in that finite area, it actually results in a decrease in the air pressure. There's an inverse relationship there of the lungs. And the lungs need to restore equilibrium in terms of the ideal pressure. And that's what causes the process of inhaling air so that we can restore that equilibrium. So as you might have guessed, the opposite is occurring when we exhale. So step one, we get a relaxation of those key muscles involved in the breathing process, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. That causes a decrease in the volume of the lungs. And because we've got more air in a tighter area, that actually increases the air pressure in the lungs and we need to release some of that pressure so that's what causes the exhaling of that air out of the lungs. 